Uh, hello, my name's Nicholas Budimir. I'm a sociologist at Muskegon Community College. Uh, you might ask, what's a sociologist doing here talking about the Balkans? Uh, I did take uh, several years of history courses at the University of Michigan. I studied under uh, eminent Balkan historian John Fine, but my degree is not in Balkan history. My undergraduate degree is in history and anthropology from the University of Michigan. Uh, my master's degree is in labor relations from Wayne State, and I'm working on my PhD in sociology from uh, Western Michigan University. You don't need the lights for me. Okay. Um, but why am I talking about this? I have a very personal connection. George mentioned the date, April 6, 1941. Well, my father, Wojciech Budimir, was born on April 6, 1942 in Belgrade. So one year to the day after the German invasion. Uh, so uh, from the time I was about able to move or crawl, I was instructed on how my father and how my uncle grew up in Nazi-occupied Serbia and then later on in partisan uh, communist Yugoslavia until they left in the late 1960s. So I, I have a great deal of familiarity with this period. Uh, what I'm going to be covering is probably about 15 years before George and all the way up till the end of the war, the beginning of the Civil War, and I'll try to get that all in in about half an hour. Are we ready? <laughs> so I, I first have a little question here. Uh, who has really heard of the Balkans? We don't really, uh, a few people have heard of it, but we don't hear much about it, do we? Um, in much of Europe, uh, uh, European historians, European uh, news, European empires have regarded Bal the Balkans as much of a backwater. It's, it's uh, afterthought. It's the secondary, it's the sick area of Europe, it's the, the area of turmoil. So the Balkans are not thought of well by Europeans, by European uh, leaders, <coughs> by the European power elite. Uh, this one uh, uh, Austrian statesman, Metternich, in the 19th century, had a really wonderful little, uh, you can tell what he thinks about the Balkans by this phrase, Easier begins at the Landesstrasse. And that was the royal road that followed out of Vienna. And what that means is European civilization ends at the walls of Vienna. And Asian barbaric civilization begins just outside the walls of Vienna. So you can see what, how they felt about, about how the 19th century European powers felt about the Balkans. A little later on, uh, Herr Bismarck uh, also uh, let us know about what he thought about the Balkans. And his phrase was this, the whole of the Balkans is not worth the, uh, the bones of a single Pomeranian grenadier, meaning he would not waste one German soldier uh, on a war or conflict in the Balkans. That's how little he thought of, of the Balkans. So the Balkans are basically st the stereotyped area of Europe. All the hatred, all the negativity of Europe is placed into the Balkans. This includes uh, Hitler's views of the Balkans. Uh, the Balkans have always been used as a metaphor for discord, for tribalism, for separation, for the origin of conflicts. And that actually, if you think about news coverage of the Balkans, that continues on today. We have two famous metaphors that are used for, for the Balkans. First one you might be familiar with is this idea of the Balkans as the powder keg of Europe, right? All of the conflicts start in the Balkans, which is a sort of an ironic, sick twist because actually the conflicts are imported from Western Europe and sent to the Balkans. So Western Europe exports its problems, exports its, uh, uh, its invasions, exports its economic troubles to the Balkans through economic and through imperial um, ties and extensions. The second metaphor uh, that we're all probably familiar with is the Balkanization of everything. Uh, they use the term Balkan as a, as, as a reference of if something is divided, subdivided, cut up, 
uh, into tinier and tinier and tinier realms and rivalries. So even the, the geography of the place itself is used as a metaphor for conflict and division. So you can sort of see the rhetorical devices that are used, um, that are sort of imposed by Western thought on the Balkans. So the idea is Europe doesn't think well of its little Balkan neighbors, since we are the barbarians, uh, the ones without industry and the ones without civilization. This should be the Balkans that most people are familiar with today. The newest uh, countries, Montenegro, Kosovo, Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Slovenia, Romania, and the older countries that we're familiar with, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania. Yugoslavia ceased to exist. Uh, but this is basically the Balkans today, what we should be familiar with. George talked mostly about Greece. I will tell you mostly about the former Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, uh, and the partisan resistance in Greece and in Yugoslavia.